sat down to order iced tea, I could see iced tea. I couldn't say it. And I could feel the right side of my face and the right side of my body not working. It was clear to me something was very unusual was happening. And then Dr. Bendock, 20 minutes later, showed up. The minute he walked in, not only his demeanor, but clearly the way he focuses on the emergency at hand and the patient was very calming. I knew we were in good hands. If we do an awake brain surgery, we'll be able to cast your, your cognitive functioning as we go forward so we can save everything that we can save and not take out tissue that does not have to be removed. But in addition to, to Dr. Bendock doing a phenomenal job of explaining what our choices were and the potential outcome, prior to the surgery, Daniel met with his entire care team. And the reason that was important is they wanted to understand his speech patterns, his cognition, his mental state of being, his physical state of being prior to going into surgery so that post-surgery they would have a benchmark upon which to measure his improvement on a daily basis. And I found that fascinating. Now, the thinking about, oh, I'm going to be awake. Well, you're asleep and you're awake and you're not awake. So you sleep through some of it, and then they al allow you to wake up some. And I'm looking at the neurologist who I met already uh, speak, speaking to me and saying, uh, Dr. Darby, uh, can you tell me your name? Can you tell me today's date? Can you move your right hand? Can you move your left hand? I was able to do everything that she asked. So I thought, get it all out. So far, we're, so far, so good. I feel good. My energy level is good. My word, <laughs> word selection improves daily. Uh, I, and, and like I may have said, after the emergency room visit and being where I was, every day is a smile after that.